Greetings out there in YouTube land. This is Morris Man, and as always, I thank you for coming to my channel. Today I have, because I posted a video a couple of days ago, and I supposedly started this two days ago, but forgive me, just been tied up with a lot of projects. So this is one of several videos when I'm still selling some of my musical gear. Again, there's nothing in my collection that I just want to get rid of. You know, I don't like it or, you know, some just ain't jabbing. I would like to keep everything I have, but like I told you guys, uh, I made a commitment to try to, before I leave this planet, to become a decent piano player. You know, know what I'm doing on the board like I do with guitar and bass. So I'm parting with some of the stuff that I just don't use so they won't be distractions and also taking up a lot of physical space, you know, because uh, I'm just an addict when it comes to musical gear. If I see it, I like it, I buy it. You know, sometimes I buy several. And normally when I really like something, I buy them in pairs if I can. So this is something that recently came in that it's extremely hard to find for this price. It's the EMU Virtuoso Sound Module. Uh, I'll leave several links down here and I'll also leave some stats down here. And I'll try to leave links to eBay and Reverb. Maybe Guitar Center too because all three of them have this unit for sale and nobody is selling this under $300, $400. You know, there's one on eBay and I'll leave the link down here. The guy won $300 for it. Guess what? Shit don't work. And you know how I feel about that. Why would a grown ass man try to sell another grown ass man some shit that don't work? It's broke. What are you going to do with this but throw it in the garbage? There's only... And let me go on this rant for a minute, then I get back to this. There's only one reason that you would sell stuff that's not broke. Because there are people and companies that buy stuff that's not working and they fix it. And then they make a profit off of it because they bought it very low. But these people want up and running, uh, op uh, working prices for these broke items. It's like, really? Who's going to give you $300 for a module that's not a repair guy? And the shit broke. Then they got to turn around and try to get it fixed. You know, and then even the the, the repair guy, he's not going to spend three, four hundred dollars on some shit that's broke. Because then that means that once he invests to get it fixed, he has to mark up the price just out of out of the zone. You know, uh, if you pay full for it, then you might have to buy parts and then the labor that you put in, you might have to sell that thing six hundred bucks just to turn a profit, you know. A decent profit as opposed to uh, after all that and the smoke cleared and I fixed it after the band it broke only made $25 sale, you know, profit. That ain't even worth nobody's time. So I don't understand that, you know, but sorry for that rant getting back to this. Like I said, the cheapest one you can find is $300 and it's broke. The next to the cheapest that's working, uh, music go around, they want $400. Uh, Guitar Center, and I'll try to leave the links down here so you guys can check it. I'm not making this up or exaggerate. They got one too. They want 400 No, they want 500 499 Yeah. So, I'm parting with this one because these are hard to find, especially you're not going to find it at this price. There's nothing wrong with it. It works. I'll show it to you in a Turn it on. The knob work ain't nothing missing. It ain't rusty. It ain't scratched on the top. None of that. Uh, like I said, uh, the cheapest... That you'll ever find this unit. And I'm going to go for $250. And that's a steal because, again, the next to the cheapest price that I found on eBay is broken. The guy won $300. Not working. As is for parts. Because, again, I'm like, musical gear is not like cars that you can get parts off of them and put them on other cars. Nobody does that, that they take parts off a of broke one to try to put parts on the one that they fix. Because most of us are not electricians or or repair guys we're just musicians we're not trying to fix shit we're just trying to play the shit you know but i just again i i don't get, i don't get that i mean at a lot of things that don't make sense to me that's the top one that got to be number one that somebody wants to sell you something for four hundred dollars that don't work you know and, and that's cool no it ain't throw that shit in the garbage you get it fixed you get it fixed then you sell it or you just toss it or you give it away let somebody else uh, fix it or toss it. But uh, this thing has, it's, this particular module is focusing on orchestration, violins, flute, 
Champalis. Is that pronounced Champ T I M P A N I. Uh, it has uh, brass. It has strings, oboes. It has uh, a lot of stuff that's orchestra geared. And you want at least one of those types of racks in your in your setup. You know, you want your medium potatoes, the, you know, the piano stuff, the electric pianos, the acoustic piano. Then, you know, you want to have an orchestrative one where at the beginning of your song, you want to make it sound like that you have an orchestra playing these beautiful string lines. And originally, now my cat wants to leave. Goodbye, buddy. You can leave. Have a good evening. Yeah, you want some type of realistic, if you can, of course, go afford a real string. Uh, strings, like uh, now Roger said on, uh, I think it was Good Times, he said, uh, Phil Harmonics, he said he spent $10,000 to get those strings in his song, you know, because he went and got real classical people and real instruments. But when you can't afford that, you do the best you can with a simulated one. And out of all the rack mounts that I've used throughout the years, and I've used hundreds of them, Roland was always top dog when it came to really nice, authentic sounding string stuff. And then, of course, like number four, their stuff sounds good, but it sounds artificial. Uh, now, EMU is a, a close first or second with, with Roland because uh, I did a track a, about a year ago. And, and I'll try to make this short. And this is the cool thing about sometimes when you MIDI stuff. You MIDI up stuff and you pull it from different modules and you have certain sounds. You know, it's like a, on this particular song, I want acoustic piano. Once you've completed your project and you've used several uh, rack mounts and you MIDI them together, the cool thing about MIDI is you can change the, the um, instrumentation. You know, you might say to yourself, you know what, that acoustic piano sound good, but let me try electric. Because you've already played this piece, you know, and it's been sequenced, so you can just audition different sounds after you've completed it. And this particular song, I had a certain sound patch, but for some reason, uh, I turned it to another patch, and it was strings, and the way that they swelled into the track, it was beautiful. I'm like, whoa, EM, you got some serious string stuff. You know, so I'll leave the stats down here. Then I'll leave a link so you guys can go in and listen to the different banks. And that's what's cool about the Internet, that you can kind of check out stuff thoroughly and say, OK, well, I need to hear the sounds if I'm a bad. And, and, you know, there are sites that are dedicated to doing that for you for free. And it's just it's wonderful that they do that. So, uh, again, it's 128 voices per polyphony. Meaning, and I'm not a tech guy, means that the more polyphony, polyphonies you have, because normally it was 64 voices, but when you get 128, which is double the amount, it just sounds better, it sounds thicker, it sounds fuller when you got more voices. So here it is. I'll turn it on. Okay, there it is. Give you a view of the back. Now, I remember uh, on my Roland JB880, it had a button that, uh, say for instance, you didn't have a keyboard right now to MIDI it together to, to listen to the patches. There's a button that you hit when you select a certain patch, and it'll give you a tone, you know, uh, the bottom, the mid, and the high tone. And that was a cool idea. And EMU took it to a whole nother level because every single sound patch, and there's over... Close to, oh, close to a thousand. There's like 321 instruments and there's variations of those instruments, a total of a thousand. And each one of those instruments, there's a button that you click and it says audition. And it'll play a little piece of, 
uh, just a piece of a song or a demo, letting you hear that particular patch, you know, in action. And that is a great idea for those who are not extremely versed in playing piano, or even if you are, you get a chance to hear this in action, you know, and it's, it's really great. Because uh, if I'm not mistaken, there's a, that's, it's called the audition button, and then it has demos on top of that. So you hear a lot, because when I bought the, uh, the EMU, 2, EMU 2000, I was sitting there over an hour listening to just the demos. I'm like, whoa, this is just amazing, you know? And whoever designed that feature needs to be given an award, because I'm like, you hear what you're getting, and you hear how it sounds and the contents of a, of a, of a demo, how good it sounds. And still, if you're not well versed in playing piano, you're just hitting a couple of notes. No, it'll play your composition. And it's like, whoa. So, uh, like I said, $250 plus $40 shipping and handling. It'll go out the very next business day with United States postal and tracking and signature required. So, you know, the day that it's showing up at your house and if somebody got to sign for it, they're not just going to leave it up on the side of your porch and you know, anything like that. But uh, it's real simple for this one because like I said, these are hard to come by. And today is Saturday, July the 3rd. If this hasn't been sold by Wednesday, I'm taking this video down and I'm keeping this one because they're just some things you just keep. And this is a keeper, but again, if I get a taker, fine, because uh, this just to be another distraction in my collection as far as me getting straight to the point trying to you know master the piano but it's not that often that you run across a piece like this especially for the price because again if you don't believe me I'll leave a guitar center link down here I'll leave a music go around link down here I'll leave an eBay link down here and you you price them for yourself and you'll see these are about three hundred dollars more than what I'm selling it for and then was this one's in excellent condition there's no issues with it ain't no knobs missing it ain't rusty you know, I'm not trying to sell it for parts, that nonsense, and forgive me for harping on that, because I just still don't understand that. I'm a grown-ass man, and my shit gets broke. First of all, I've never had anything break on me like a module. Why? Because I take care of my shit, you know? And if you take care of your shit, it'll last. So that right there is a red flag that, uh, why is this broke? Why is it missing shit, you know? And I'm a grown ass man, and I've said since I, you know I didn't take care of it, it's broke. I'm gonna sell it to somebody else, maybe three hundred dollars, and tell them oh they can use it for parts. This ain't no damn car, and ain't nobody interchanging parts for modules. Never happened, and never will. It's either junk, or you're gonna get it fixed and then sell it or keep it. You know, so uh, forgive me for that, cause that just gets my goal. I mean, it really does. That somebody think they're gonna get three hundred dollars for some shit ain't working. Like, what I'm going to do with some shit ain't working and I'm going to spend $300 for this. And I'm just going to end up throwing it in the garbage or paying too much to get it fixed. And I, the money that it might cost me to get it fixed, I can find one that's working for the same price that I got to spend to get it fixed after I didn't already bought it. Does that make sense to you? I didn't think so. So until next time, take care again. $250, $40 shipping and handling. To go out the very next business day with tracking signature required. Like I said, within three days, if I don't have a buyer, I'm keeping this. Till next time, take care and thanks for watching.